Welcome to the Sierra SaaS Protocol Analyzer Training. My name is Mike Micheletti, and I'm a product manager here at Teledyne LaCroix. Today we're going to look at the packet view, which is the default display that is presented when you first use the Sierra SaaS SATA Protocol Analyzer. As the name implies, it provides a logical view of packets on the bus organized sequentially and labeled with a timestamp as well as which port on the analyzer it was captured. The traffic in this trace is SAS 12 gigabit and we've triggered on the first SMP request on the bus indicated by this red trigger marker. To help you understand what we're looking at here, the name of the field is shown in the white above with the contents of the field shown below in the greenish color. By default, we're going to show you each field in unscrambled hex format and then we'll actually add the decoding in some cases to help you understand what the field means. For some of the more redundant events like primitives, we're simply going to show the name of the primitive and how many were captured. In addition to the absolute timestamp you see on the left, we're also going to show the relative time which is the delta between the start of the previous packet and the start of this packet. The duration is the elapsed time on the bus for this individual event. This is one of the more popular views that we provide in the software because it allows you to move up the protocol stack and view the higher layer transactions occurring on the bus. So for example, if you're working at the system level or a software stack developer, you can use these buttons to decode up the logical transaction layers to the logical application layer. Notice how the display groups these physical packets into the logical SCSI and SMP operations, changing the display and showing additional information about the transaction. We still see a lot of link layer primitives and open address frames that fill up the display. So we provide a very handy mechanism called hide unassociated traffic. By pressing that button it removes all the redundant primitives and open address frames allowing you to see just the logical SMP and SCSI transactions. Now we can see that we're looking at four wide traffic as there are SMP discover operations going on across all four links on this wide port scrolling through we can see that there are additional SCSI transactions as the initiator discovers which devices are attached to the expander. We see a report LUNS followed by inquiry commands. So now you've moved to a much higher layer to be able to get the 10,000 foot view of what's taking place on the bus. Now you can still get back to those lower level events by right clicking you can use the expand all SCSI command packets and you'll reveal the lower transport layer events that make up these SCSI operations. Here we see the traditional command data and status packets as they occurred on the bus. Now any fields that you're not familiar with you can float over and tooltips will provide an explanation. These tooltips can also be turned off if you'd like. Now anywhere you see this plus sign means you can open that transport layer event to reveal the actual command and handshake packet sent from the two endpoints. So now you see how you can drill down to the logical link layer. What if you now want to see the rest of the link layer events around this single command? The key to that is to put this event at the top. So we now have the command at the top of the screen I'm going to bring back my lower layer primitives and then decode now back to the transport layer which leaves me right in the middle of this SCSI inquiry operation. There's my command. I'll now go to the link layer and uh, now I'm looking at just the logical link layer events as they occurred chronologically on the bus. Okay, so this is the lowest layer of the packet view, but assuming you want to go lower, you can always click on the plus sign to reveal the actual D-word level display of the command frame as it was sent over the bus. So this is really sort of an unformatted view of the data, not that useful. If you close that, right-click and choose View Fields, 
you're now presented with a different display, which is really a more of a formatted, fully decoded view of all the header and payload portion of this frame. All the fields are here, including the tag and the data offset. You can view this in binary as well as hex. And these buttons allow you to actually step through every frame sequentially so you can easily see when a field changes. So that gives you a nice byte aligned view of the command frame. But probably the most popular option for viewing that level of detail is the frame inspector. This opens a separate window with two tabs. The spec view is really a combination of the link data and the field view. It provides a raw hex dump of D words in the frame. It also has a formatted display, both header and payload, with all the fields decoded in a format similar to the specifications. You scroll down to see all the fields. Selecting an individual field will highlight the relevant symbols in the raw hex view. The frame inspector views are all synchronized with the packet view above. If I jump to a different frame using the go to trigger, you'll notice the display changes. The spec view will always reflect the currently selected packet. So spec view is a good choice for giving you that frame header view as well as the decoded commands. Now if I go to the SCSI layer and then hide the unassociated traffic, it continues to reflect the command frame that is selected in the packet view. Now, if your work has you more focused on the SCSI command layer, you may prefer the field view, which contains the same frame header and payload information, but then adds more detail about the complete exchange. Let me jump to a SCSI command. Now, by decoding the full response frame, including the IU, it gives you a lot more information than the spec view. So you see the response data, including the full inquiry string, fully decoded as it was received from the device. So the packet view combined with the frame inspector gives you good drill down uh, where you can stay at the highest level and then easily access lower level details. I'll close the frame inspector. And just a few final points about the packet view. Every field can be customized in terms of the color, the format, as well as the default settings. There are several ways to change the amount of data that's visible in the packet view. For example, usually there's only one initiator in a trace. It doesn't change. So you can right click, choose hide field. Everything moves to the left. Now you can see additional fields out on the far end. Maybe you still can't see everything. Turn the wrap off, and that will force the line to break so you can see all the fields within a single screen. I prefer to keep the wrap on. It allows you to see when fields change more easily. To bring back a hidden field, just right click, use show field, and choose the source address. Now it's back. The use of color helps your eye recognize events without reading the field name but you can customize the color of all of these cells. For example, if I wanted to customize inquiry, I can click on the inquiry, choose color, click on the color palette, make it orange, hit OK. It's going to now change all of my inquiries to this orange color, making it easier to see. So you can always right click to change individual fields, or you can go to the trace viewer configuration. Use setup preferences, Click on the Trace Viewer tab, press the Configuration button. This gives you a single interface that allows you to customize virtually every field within the Packet View display. In addition to color, some users may choose to disable the tooltips and select the trigger as the timestamp origin. Select OK and OK. That change will now be permanent for every trace going forward. You can always restore using the factory settings button. That's a brief overview of the packet view. In the next training, we'll look at some of the alternate displays and ways to combine the views for specific applications.